In this lesson, we're going to take a look at secants, tangents, and then the angles that those secants and tangents make, and the relationship between those angles and the intercepted arcs. So to get going, the first thing I would do is I'd go through and put these six circles into your circle book, and we're going to eventually fill all of those up. And the first thing I put in here is a tangent line. So this green line here is a tangent line that we talked about in our previous lesson. That point where the tangent line actually touches the circle is referred to as the point of tangency. Now a line that's going to essentially go through the circle and touch the circle at two points is referred to as a secant. So remember the difference. Tangent line touches the circle one time, secant line touches the circle two times. Now in this next one, I have two secants, or think of it as two chords. They're intersecting inside the circle. Now, in this one, these chords are not intersecting at the center. They're intersecting just at some point in the circle, and they're going to create angles. And we're going to look at the measure of, of this angle here. We could look at the measure of the angle here as well, but just for this example, I'm going to look at the measure of what I'm going to refer to as angle 1. Now, if, if this would be at the center, the measure of the intercepted arc would be equal to the measure of angle 1, or if this vertex of angle 1 was on the circle, then the intercepted arc would be twice the measure of the of the inscribed angle. But being it's not either one of those, we have to have another way to calculate the measure of that. So it's kind of a, a combination of this arc and this arc. So arc AB and arc CD will be used to calculate the measure of angle 1. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to take the average of these two arcs. So think of it as angle 1's intercepted arc. And then notice we have the vertical angle here. So the vertical angle of angle 1's intercepted arc. Those two arcs will be added together, divided by 2, to give you the measure of angle 1. Think average. Now in the next one, I have a tangent line and a secant line. And we're going to look at the angle created where those two lines intersect. So we want to find the measure of angle 1. We'll also be able to find the measure of angle 2. Same kind of thing, just the two angles we're going to look at. Now, what I like to think of it is the vertex here is on the circle. So this angle is kind of like an inscribed angle. The difference is, obviously, this side of the angle is not inside the circle like it would be on an inscribed angle. But the relationship between the angle and the intercepted arc is going to be the same. And the way I always thought about this is, if I took a point B and I were to drag it this way, the measure of the angle is getting larger and larger as this angle gets bigger and bigger. So if I keep moving B this way, that angle is going to get closer and closer to 180 degrees. Well, the measure of the arc inside here is also going to get bigger as B moves over, and the measure of the arc is going to get closer and closer to 360 degrees. So if I got it as big as it possibly could, the angle would be 180 degrees, the arc would be 360 degrees, which then tells me that if I took the arc, cut it in half, I'd get the measure of the angle, which I put right here. So if I take the arc's measure, multiply it by half, or divide by 2, I'm going to get the measure of that angle in here. Same thing's going to work for the measure of angle 2. Just use the arc that's inside of that angle as well, or referred to as the intercepted arc. Now, my next ones, these are all very similar. But what we'll notice is, in my first example here, I have two secants intersecting, and notice they're intersecting outside the circle. In my next one, I have a tangent and a secant intersecting outside the circle. And in my last one, I have a tangent and a tangent intersecting outside the circle. So if that's the case, what we need to do is we need, now we have two intercepted arcs. We have the little arc in here, and the big arc out here. Same thing's going to happen in the next one. We have the little arc and the big arc, and here's the little arc and the big arc. So to calculate the measure of the angle, what we need to do is we need to take those two arcs and we need to subtract them. Big minus little. Because if we did little minus big, we'd end up with a negative. So we're going to do the big arc minus the little arc divided by 2. And you may want to, in your notes, just right next to this, go write big minus little divided by 2. And it's not going to be any different for the next one. Again, big arc minus little arc, divide by 2. And last but not least, same thing. Take the big arc minus the little arc and divide by 2. 
Now keep in mind that these aren't these formulas aren't just used to find the measures of the angles. If I knew the measure of angle A and I knew the measure of the big arc, well I'd only have one variable left in my equation and I can solve for the measure of the little arc. Or if I knew the measure of the little arc and I knew the measure of the angle, I could solve the equation for the measure of the big arc. And the same thing's gonna happen in all my other ones as well. As long as you only have one variable in your equation, you should be able to solve it. Now that's going to conclude my lesson portion on secants, tangents, and the angles in our circles.